Okay. Um, so I'm going to do a, a bunch of different stuff today. Um, starting up, starting off with uh, finishing this conversation from last time about um, the universal coefficient theorem and the the Kuhn theorem and how these kind of generalize to spectral sequences. Um, so what the statement that I made is. Um, Let's suppose we have a ring spectrum E. Um, which satisfies the Adams condition. So that means that E is a filtered homotopy colimit of finite spectra E alpha, such that um, the, the E homology of the dual of E alpha, so this is the same as the E cohomology of E alpha, is finite projective as an E star module. And such that these e, these e alphas, or sorry, I should say the duals of the e alphas satisfy the um, sort of an easy version of the universal coefficient theorem, which is that uh, for any e module m, the natural map from maps from dual of e alpha into m to e star module maps. of E star dual E alpha into M star is an isomorphism. Okay, so under these conditions, um, there's a spectral sequence where the E2 page is X'd of E star modules from E star X into M, and it converges to um, the M cohomology of X. Uh, and again, this is where M is an, is an E module. Um, right, uh, so I should say, um, I, I think I, I was confused about the gradings last time, um, but uh, what's, what's going on is that um, this X is bigraded because on the one hand, since it's uh, derived functors of palm, it has it has uh, a degree associated to it, um, and so that's that's what p is. So p is the cohomological degree of x. Um, and then these are maps of graded modules. Sorry, this should say m star. These are maps of graded modules, and q is the um, the degree of the map of graded modules. So um, so I think what I mean is that uh, a map in in, in internal degree Q is one that increases the degrees here by Q. And so if you do, if you use those conventions, then this, this really converges to, uh, to M uh, P minus Q X. Um, so here's the proof. Uh, I, I started talking about this last time. Um, But uh, so it's, it's sort of two steps and I, I think I kind of did the first one, but let me just remind you about the first one. So, um, so the first step is that for all X, there's a map from some spectrum W to X where W is a wedge of suspensions of these dual E alphas indexed by some set J um, and inducing a surjection on E homology. Um, and the way that we did this is, is we said it, it suffices to hit a single class in E homology. Um, and then you can sort of do this uh, because of the fact that E is the homotopy colimit of the E alphas. 
Um, so any class in E homology sort of comes from a, a class in E alpha homology for some E alpha. Um, so assuming that, that, uh, that you can do that, um, the, the second step is to build a resolution of X. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna write down a diagram that looks like this. Um, and with the following properties. So first of all, uh, each of these W's is one of these spectra that we constructed in step one. And um, the map from uh, E star WI to XI is a certain sorry, to, to E star XI as a surjection. Um, and then we define XI plus one to be the cofiber of the map from WI to XI. So WI to XI to XI plus one is a cofiber sequence. Okay. Um, and one of the things that makes the proof work, work by the way, is so we we required the, the DE alphas to have this, this special version of the universal coefficient theorem where uh, maps into an E module are really just detected as, as, as maps of E star modules. Um, but this is also true if you suspend the DE alphas and it's also true if you take a, a wedge of them. So this statement right here that maps into M are the same as maps of E star modules into M star, um, that's also true for, for all of these spectra W. So, um, so now what we can do is we can, uh, we can build a spectral sequence by assembling all this information into an exact couple. Um, so, and uh, if you've never seen this before, I'm sorry, um, but this is, uh, so there, there, the, the way that Adams does it in the blue book is I think slightly, slightly easier than what I'm doing. Um, But somehow this is this is the way that makes the most sense to me. So so what we're doing is we're taking the the M cohomology of everything um, and uh, and adding them all together, indexed by all i. And then you get maps like this. Um, so. Some of these maps are, are induced by the maps that you see in the diagram. Um, and some of the maps are induced by the fact that these little, um, that uh, these W to X to X are all cofiber sequences. So you have a map um, from, from each X to a W that, that, uh, that's the, the boundary map in a cofiber sequence. So, um, so the spectral sequence associated to this exact couple is one whose E1 term is uh, this thing right here. So uh, the E1 is the um, direct sum of the M cohomology of the WIs. Um, and now, as we said, so, so the M cohomology of WI is maps from WI into M. And this is the same as uh, maps of Um, of E star modules from E star WI into M star. Okay, and we have to be a little bit careful here. Um, when, we, when we talk about the M cohomology of WI, we want to talk about cohomology that's in all uh, degrees. Um, so it's not just maps from WI into M, it's maps from suspensions of WI into M. Um, but the statement is still true if we regard this HOM as a graded HOM. Um, now the D1 differential, so if you have an exact couple like this, you can sort of extend it over um, to the right and left by adding more copies on either side. And the, the way that the D1 differential works is you go, um, you go like this. Okay, so um, 
So this comes from some map that, um, I mean, since this is a map on cohomology, it comes from a map on spectra that goes in the opposite direction from a W to an X to a W. And what those maps are, um, are uh, these compositions. So these are the maps that go from um, WI to XI and then applying the, uh, the boundary map in the cofiber sequences to the suspension of W I minus one. Those, those induce the, the D one differentials. Um, and so now uh, we, we should think about, um, so what we're doing with these maps is, uh, is we're looking at, at what they induce on E star homology. Um, so these maps induce uh, maps like this. Um, but the other thing that we can do with this diagram is, uh, is we can think about all of the W's mapping into the E homology of X by, um, by uh, um, applying these, these various maps. Um, and so we get, uh, so by hypothesis, This first map from E star W zero to X was supposed to induce a surjection on E star homology. Um, and the kernel of this surjection uh, comes from the fiber of W zero to X zero, which is suspension minus one of X one. Um, and then again, uh, W one, the, the E homology of W one surjects onto the, e, onto the E homology of X one. Um, and so this gives you a map from E star suspension minus one W one to E star W zero that hits the kernel of this map and so on and so on. Um, so in other words, uh, these maps give you a, a resolution of E star X by E star modules. And by hypothesis, this is actually a projective resolution. And moreover, these maps um, from E star suspension minus J W J to the, the next term in the resolution are exactly the D1 differentials that I was talking about earlier. So if you take this, this chain complex E1 with its D1 differentials and you take the homology of it, um, you are, uh, what you're doing is you're mapping this projective resolution of E star X into M star and taking the homology of that. And that's exactly what computes um, X of E star modules of E star X into M star. Um, right. And then uh, you can figure out um, what the different, what the rest of the differentials do and, and how the grading works from thinking about this. And um, I think I'm actually not gonna do that because in the examples that I actually care about this, uh, this spectral sequence is um, extremely uninteresting. Uh, but so this is the proof. Basically, you've resolved X by a bunch of spectra with the property that their E star homologies give you a projective resolution of E star X as, as an E star module. Okay. Um, like I said, there's a Tor version of this. And but let me say that I'm, I'm a bit confused about this. So I'm just gonna highlight a confusion that maybe someone um, can help me out with or, or that you all can think about later. But the the Tor version is supposed to be um, that under the same conditions you have a you have a spectral sequence where the E2 page is Tor of E star modules of E star X with M star and converging now to the M homology of X. Um, and the idea for constructing this spectral sequence um, is it should be the exact same thing. So um, 
you should uh, construct a resolution of X by spectra like this with the property that their um, their E star homologies gives you a gives you a projective resolution of of E star X and uh, since it's a projective resolution, it's also a flat resolution. And so tensoring with, with M star allows you to compute Tor. Um, but the thing I'm confused about is that uh, we, we assumed this fact about um, uh, maps from one of the DE alpha into M, uh, giving, you, giving you some sort of HOM. And it seems like you want a, you want a similar thing that's like um, M star DE alpha for any E module M is, is isomorphic to uh, E star D E alpha tensored over E star with M star. Um, and Adam seems to claim that this, uh, that this is also true under the same condition, but I can't see why it follows from, from his condition um, having to do with, with cohomology and with Homs. So I'm just gonna put kind of a question mark on this. Um, maybe this is a separate condition that has to be assumed to get this Tor spectral sequence. I think there's a more general spectral sequence yeah. where you get rid of the E star mm -hmm. and you change the thing it converges to, to the homotopy groups of M smash over E with X. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and then it's not clear to me that you where this. this condition would come up. Isn't yeah. that, isn't the spectral sequence literally that one, but you're just looking at the module that's just E smash X? And yes, then exactly. Exactly. Yeah, I think you guys are the product there, because then I think you can do it in the sort of usual way where you resolve by like free, like free, like free sort of suspensions of shifts of R, or shifts of R, like free shifts of R, basically. Yeah, yeah, it's exactly. I think it's exactly that, and. Um, Is and, this condition unnecessary then for the Tor one? It it doesn't seem to me like it is. I didn't run into it. Okay. Right, um, so I I want to write down what you all are saying, um, but uh, okay. Uh, so 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 what you're saying is that. Um, sorry, can, can you say what you just said again? Sean? So you take Tor yeah. over E star of X star and M star. Where X and M are both E modules now? Correct. And now it converges to the homotopy groups of the relative smash product. OK, OK. And this should be true without assuming some condition on, on this is This is, yeah, this is true. I mean, there are mild cellularity conditions, mm -hmm. right? But everything is cellular in spectra. Like X and M need to be cell E modules or something like this in the sense of EKMM. Cool. But they, they just need to be cofibrant over a cofibrant S algebra. Okay, something great, like fantastic. And then what Liam was saying is you can recover the original spectral sequence just by taking M to be E smash X. Um, or X to be E smash X or whatever, yeah. Sure, 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 yeah. yeah. Cool, okay, thank you. Um, but this other thing may still be true just if you play around with the fact that you've assumed this projectivity condition and then see that the universal coefficient spectral sequence collapses or something and then mm -hmm. play with moving the dual uh, the spanier whitehead dual back and forth or whatever yeah 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 there's something about yeah um yeah i was i was messing around with that before this before this talk but didn't get anywhere that i that i liked but um yeah it's it's better to have this this general one anyway i think um okay so uh so in any case, this, this, this Adams condition is satisfied for a bunch of interesting spectra. Um, so it's satisfied for uh, the sphere spectrum, HFP, KO, KU, uh, MO and MU, which I don't think we really talked about. And um, and you can look at Adams's book for the for the proofs of these things. Um, so, for example, to to briefly talk about the case of HFP, um, it's worth noticing that this the universal coefficient condition that maps from X into an HFP module M is the same as uh, 
FP vector space maps from the mod P homology of X into M. Um, this is actually true for all finite spectra. Um, so somehow HFP modules are, are, are very uh, simple spectra. Um, but uh, yeah, but I'm, I'm not going to prove that. So you should look at the, at the blue book if you're interested. Okay, so let me give some examples now. Um, so some of the more interesting examples actually come from um, in, in uh, you know, at first year algebraic topology, you talk about, um, about ordinary homology with coefficients and um, and the first case of this universal coefficient theorem that you learn is how do you what happens when you change the coefficients in in, um, in the homology? Uh, so you start with homology with coefficients in Z, and you try to compute say rational homology or mod P homology. Um, and there there are similar examples here. Uh, so um, let me make a definition. So let's say that a is an abelian group. Then the Mohr spectrum for A. Um, and Adams write, writes this as SA, although I don't think there's really a standard notation for it, is um, is a spectrum whose uh, zeroth homology group is A, and whose other homology groups are zero. Um, and I, sorry, I think I should say connective spectrum here. And so now because of the Whitehead theorem, this, this, this uh, uniquely gives us a spectrum up to, up to weak equivalents. Um, so these are pretty easy to construct. Uh, all you have to do is take some free resolution of A. So there's, um, There's some exact sequence uh, of abelian groups like this. Um, and then we can just take the corresponding cofiber sequence. Um, wait, sorry, I need to think about what I'm saying for a second. Uh, yeah, this, this is fine. Um, we can take the corresponding cofiber sequence of spectra. Um, and now if you just, you take the homology of this cofiber sequence and look at the corresponding long exact sequence, it just reduces to this, um, to this short exact sequence. And notice that I've assumed that this map, um, this map of free abelian groups is an injection uh, so that I don't accidentally get some H1. Um, and uh, obviously you can suspend these spectra and get, and get spectra with, a, with homology concentrated in whatever, whatever individual degree that you want. So, um, so in general, if you have some ring spectrum E, you can sort of change the coefficients of E by defining E A to be E smashed with the Mohr spectrum for A. And in particular, uh, if either E star or A is flat over Z, Then, um, then the homotopy groups of EA are equal to E star uh, tensored with A. Um, and you could see this because you can smash E with this cofiber sequence and get another cofiber sequence that looks like this. Um, 
and then sort of realized that the the homotopy groups of um, of EA come from a come from tensoring E star with with A. So um, so the tor spectral sequence in this case looks like this. computing the EA homology of X. Um, since the right-hand side is uh, uh, under this assumption, since the since EA star is E star tensor A, this is really the same as Tor over Z um, with e, of E star X with A. And in particular, if A is flat over Z, Then this Tor group is just concentrated in degree zero, and you get that for any x, E star x tensor A is uh, isomorphic to E A star x. I have a silly question. Yeah. Is there no way to get that result about A being flat over Z um, using a Kunitz spectral sequence argument or this? Oh, is this this statement that EA star equals e, e star tensor A? Yeah. Yeah, there totally is. Yeah, it's. I mean, it's exactly the spectral sequence that I that I wrote down right here with with the sphere with X being the sphere. Um, no, that's that seems tautologous to me. I don't see how that wait, gives no, you sorry. that. Because uh, the left hand side is just EA star. Yeah, I, yeah, yeah. I mean, somehow you want to work over the sphere, but you can't work over the sphere because. Uh, it's not right. Yeah, you don't know anything about E being flat over the sphere. Um, could we use the? So I'm sure that what you're saying is right, Sean, but I. I don't see how to do it. I've... Yeah. It's weird. Yeah. Because it's sort of like you're almost doing the, you're doing the hard part of the spectral sequence, but not the spectral sequence with this cofiber argument. No, I know exactly. I was thinking that when I was writing this down. Um, yeah, I don't know. Uh, Maybe that's a distraction. Yeah, sorry. No, it's okay. We should, uh, we can talk about it um, afterwards though, if, if people are interested. Uh, Yeah. So so anyway, um, so a few examples that that sort of give you interesting answers are um, are uh, so you can invert a prime, you can localize it a prime. So in other words, you invert all all primes not equal to p, um, and these are both abelian groups which are flat over z. Um, and so you have this theory of, um, of uh, stable homotopy theory, um, where you sort of tensored everything with one of these one of these two rings, and thus either excluded some bad primes or isolated some primes that you're particularly interested in. Um, and since a lot of the things that we're trying to compute in in homotopy theory are like finitely generated abelian groups, um, this can often be a really nice method to uh, to uh, pick them apart into pieces that just depend on specific primes. Um, so, um, and then I, another thing that we could do is we could work with the, the rational numbers. Um, so, uh, and so this, this turns out to give us a, a theory that's like particularly easy. Um, so taking this, this statement where A is equal to Q, you get that, um, the homotopy groups of X smash with SQ. So this is SQ lower star X is the same as the homotopy groups of X tensored with Q. So in particular, let's take X, X to be the sphere. So if X is the sphere, then the homotopy groups of SQ are the same as the homotopy groups of spheres tensored with Q. And now here's a fact about the homotopy groups of spheres. Um, 
So pi star s is a finite abelian group. in all degrees greater than or equal to one. Um, I think this is due to, to Serre, uh, who, who actually computed the unstable homotopy groups of spheres tensored with Q. Um, but so in particular, this means that the that pi star SQ is just concentrated in degree zero. So this is Q in degree zero. So this Mohr spectrum SQ actually uh, has a single uh, non-zero homotopy group as well. So SQ is the same as the eilenberg maclean spectrum HQ. Um, and that means that if we want to compute the rational, sorry, the rational homology of a spectrum, so by definition, this is the homotopy groups of X smashed with HQ. HQ is the same as SQ, so it's this, so this is the same as this. This is the same as pi star X tensor with Q. So um, after tensoring with Q, uh, homotopy groups and homology groups um, are the exact same thing. Um, and, uh, and in particular, if you take this, this line of thinking a little bit further, you end up seeing that rational spectra are basically the same um, as graded Q vector spaces. So the, uh, to be precise, the homotopy category of rational spectra is the same as the, is, is equivalent to the category of graded Q vector spaces. Um, so uh, unstably things are a lot more interesting. There's, um, there's a relationship between uh, unstable rational homotopy and rational homology that's a little bit more complicated than this. Um, and actually there are some, some sort of uh, completely algebraic ways of talking about rational homotopy theory um, unstably uh, that uh, that um, that are due to Quillen and Sullivan. So, so rational spaces are sort of um, you can you can model them as uh, as like differential graded algebras or differential graded Lie algebras, but it just happens that um, most of the interesting stuff that happens is somehow unstable. Um, yeah, and, and so like Sean is saying, if you know that, then you can prove, you can prove this stuff, um, this stable stuff using the unstable stuff. Uh, okay. Um, any questions about any of this or, or comments? Sorry, when you say rational spectra, do you just mean things of the form smash with HQ? Um, yeah, I, I guess what I mean is is spectra whose homotopy groups are rational. Um, but what I but I, that's a simple way of saying something a, a bit more complicated, which is that um, there's a way to uh, which is spectra whose homotopy groups are rational. Um, I think it's equivalent to saying that they're modules over the rational sphere. Yeah. Whatever, I mean, I think what you, there's something you're avoiding saying, which is fine. I agree. Um, but you don't mean things smashed with HQ and you don't mean modules over HQ, although it happens to be the same. Yeah, yeah. So it's, so the thing I was avoiding saying is that there's also a notion of rational space. Um, which, which you can define as a space whose homotopy groups are rational vector spaces. Um, and a, whatever a rational spectrum is, it should be, it should be the stabilization of rational spaces. Um, but but the, these all turn out to be the same thing just because the theory is so, is so simple. So I, I, I hope that's okay. Um, Yeah, anyway, uh, let me see. So I had another, yeah, so let me give you, let me give you an example of, um, of uh, so I, I actually stole this from Mark Behrens' website. Um, who, uh, he apparently taught a course on stable homotopy theory pretty recently. Um, uh, so this is another example of how, how inverting primes can simplify some things. Um, 
So we sort of have to assume some things to make to, to make this work. But the, the main idea is that there's a map from KO to KU, which, which says, uh, take a real vector bundle and complexify it. Um, this is a map of ring spectra, but it's also just a map of spectra. Um, and you can show that the cofiber is the twofold suspension of KO. OK, so this extends to a cofiber sequence like this. Um, and you can show that this, this cofiber sequence comes from smashing KO with, with a much simpler cofiber sequence. So, um, so what's going on is that there's a map from S2 to S1, which is the suspension of the, the Hopf invariant map, eta. Um, and this, uh, this is the cofiber sequence you get from coning off eta. So in particular, um, KO smash the cone of eta is KU. Um, but another, another thing that you can prove about eta is that two times eta equals zero. Okay, this isn't, this isn't true unstably. So unstably, um, eta starts as a map. Uh, unstable is going to be light green. So um, unstably, eta is a map from S3 to S2 that's, that's actually uh, that uh, does not satisfy 2 times eta equals 0. But if you suspend it once, then you get a map from S4 to S3, uh, which does satisfy 2 eta, two eta equals 0. So this, is, so this statement about maps of spectra is something that you can check unstably um, in this homotopy group. OK, so what that means is that if you invert two, so if you write down the same cofiber sequence, but you've inverted two everywhere, um, then this cofiber sequence actually splits. So this map is zero, which means that this is the same as, sorry, this map is zero after inverting two. Um, so uh, the cone of eta with two inverted is the same as um, the wedge of S0 and S2 with two inverted. And so smashing everything with, with KO, um, you get that KU with two inverted is uh, um, splits as, as two copies of KO with two inverted. Uh, so somehow um, studying KO away from the prime two is no more complicated than studying KU. Um, and in particular, if you have like a, like a KO module away from two, you can extend it to a KU module away from two using this, this decomposition and so on and so on. Um, so somehow there's, there's a single like bad prime for KO, which is, which is the prime where all the torsion in its homotopy is concentrated. And that's the prime two. I'm sorry, I have a question about something you just said. Did you yeah. say that if you have a KO module, yeah, uh, or if you have a module over KO join a half, you can extend it to get a module over KU a join a half? Maybe I just kind of pulled that out of my ass. Uh, no, I know I'm I don't know one way or the other. I just uh, wait, no, I don't right. usually I should, invert I two. Um, I'm wondering if this is an equivalence of algebras. Uh so it's it's not an equivalence of algebras, um, because the the generator here squares, I mean you have a thing in degree in degree two, which which uh, right, yeah. which so squares there, there's, there's a, there's a non-zero multiplication here. Um, okay, but but maybe it can be resolved regardless, which is which is fine. I was just curious. Yeah. yeah. Um. Sorry, I have an I have a question too. This sure. equivalence of uh, what? Can you scroll up a little bit? Yeah. I, I remember seeing this in Adam's book and I think he attributes this fact to like Reg Wood or something that KO mm -hmm. smash the cone of eta is, is KU. Mm -hmm. I've never been able to like track down an argument of this thing. And like, I was wondering if you could maybe like explain why this is reasonable. Um, yeah. Um, so, I might I might not do a good job right now, but we could also talk about it in the chat later. Um, sure. Yeah. yeah. 
Um, if I mean, if someone else who's here knows, you 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 can totally jump in and and tell us. Um, I mean, Bob Bruner would say, "Well, it's an atom spectral sequence argument, or something like that." Yeah, um, which is perhaps not the most helpful thing in the world. Um, but if you know the homotopy groups of Ko and Ku, you can, I think, get the homotopy groups of the of the cofiber. Um, and it might be that's not hard. I don't think I, I I don't think it's hard, right? I mean, we know what the homotopy groups of Ko are as an algebra. Yeah. So we can compute what the I mean, so first of all, just work with the other part where you look at the map with eta, mm -hmm. right? And you can just um, compute what the homotopy groups are of the cofiber of eta acting on Ko. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, why that should actually explicitly be Ku is not uh, obvious to me right now. I think it might actually be easier. So I, I don't know if this counts as like an out of spectral sequence computation or not, but but there's a there's a connective version of this too, right? Um, yes, exactly. That's the atom spectral. But but I think it just amounts to like knowing the the ordinary homology of everything. Um, yeah. But maybe you're saying you, you need the atom spectral sequence to. No, I mean, you want to, uh, I guess w one thing I would think of off the top of my head is write down, compute what the maps are from mm -hmm. uh, KO smash the cofiber of eta to KU mm -hmm. using the atom spectral sequence in the connective setting. Mm -hmm. See that there's an isomorphism in degree zero mm -hmm. um, on the next page and the atom spectral sequence collapses. So that there's just an isomorphism there. Does that make sense? Well, I was thinking about so this the the homology of this. This is um, this is this right? Yep. And the homology of this is uh, is a mod mod some like e of one algebra right? Uh, yeah. So but right, like you could instead of looking at maps from KO, look at maps from KO smash cofiber eta to KU. Oh, I see what you're saying. Yeah. And then just use the fact that you know that the homology, they have the same homology. Mm -hmm. Write down the X group, use a change of rings theorem to get that it's just uh, tensored up from E of one, which they're both free over or whatever after the change of rings. And so there's just one, mm -hmm. there should be one unique thing there. That's my suggestion. Okay. But I don't, I don't know that that's like a satisfying argument for other people. I mean, I think there's probably like also good arguments using the fact that like Ada is the complex hop map. Or something like that. I mean, I, I imagine there's some like nice, fun argument like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, this is probably not the most yeah. the most interesting thing for people who don't know what I'm talking I about. I think I'd enjoy the argument if I understood any of it. Yeah, like, um, it sounds it sounds fun. Yeah. So here here's I mean, what I'll propose like let's let's talk about it more afterwards maybe because we can we can probably put it together if we. If we, uh, yeah, if if we it, we can probably put it together if we talk about it. Um, but uh, yeah, I don't like I don't remember how to do this, and I, I don't I don't want to just like struggle for in front of everybody for for however much longer. Um, yeah. So uh, and and if if we can't figure out how to do it today. Um, you know, I, I can like think about it and we can talk about it next week or something. Um, 
Right. So anyway, um, the, the next thing that I want to talk about is uh, limits. Um, so, so let's say that we have, um, let's say that X is the homotopy limit of some diagram Xn. This is a complete, complete change of topic, by the way. Um, so let's say that X is the, the homotopy limit of a tower. Um, so in, in other words, it's indexed by, uh, by the, na the natural numbers. Um, and the question is, if we know the homotopy groups of the X end, uh, how do we figure out the homotopy groups of X? So there's a trick that you can use to do this, which comes from the fact that this diagram is so nice. Um, and this is actually true in any model category. So uh, a limit like this can be replaced as an equalizer of a diagram involving uh, products. So, so the, the two maps here are the identity map, and um, if we if we call these maps Fn, then um, then you can map each xn to, X, to each xn minus one by. Uh, the corresponding fn and, and these give you a map between these these two objects okay so if we get rid of the hose and we're, we're talking about um about uh, limits in in ordinary categories then this is um then this is hopefully familiar uh and and it's also true um it's also true with the hose in front of it because uh i don't know these products are homotopy products and you can think about what it means for for um for like a a cone on this diagram to be homotopy coherent. So if you're in spectra, um, this is the same as the the fiber of the difference of these maps. And in particular, there's there's a fiber sequence which goes from the limit to the product to the product. So if we want to compute the homotopy groups of X, we can compute them by taking the long exact sequence on homotopy groups. Um, and this breaks up into short exact sequences that look like this. So a homotopy group of X maps to the corresponding, uh, to the kernel of the map on the corresponding homotopy group. And then the kernel of this map from pi star x to this kernel is the co-kernel of the map on the homotopy group that's one higher. Sorry, so this should be pi star plus one. Okay. So um, in this group, so what does this mean? This means, uh, so, so I, I guess each of these, the, this homotopy group of a product, this breaks up as the product of homotopy groups, right? Um, and so this means a sequence. This is the set of sequences of, of homotopy classes, uh, Cn in pi star Xn. With the property that Fn applied to Cn is equal to Cn minus one. Okay, and this is exactly the same as the limit of this diagram of homotopy groups. So this is the limit of pi star Xn. Um, the stuff over here also has a name. So this is uh, this is what's called the first right-derived functor of the of the limit, and it's usually written like this. Um, And so we can rewrite this exact sequence 
uh, like this. And this is usually called, um, called the Milner exact sequence. Okay, but I, I, I think it's, uh, it's nice to actually construct it because um, if you see lim one, you often don't really know how to compute it. And this, this at least gives you a way to compute it. It's the, it's the co-kernel of some specific map between, between groups. Um, so in a lot of cases that, that we care about, this, this lim one is gonna vanish for some reason or another. Um, and so you'll really have that the homotopy groups of the, uh, of the limit are the, are the limit of the homotopy groups. Um, so for example, um, I think the, the big statement that people like is that uh, if, if the sequence of groups pi star xn satisfies what's called the mittag leffler condition, then this lim one term is gonna vanish. So what the mittag leffler condition says is that, um, is that if we look at the maps from pi star xn plus k to pi star xn, then the images of these maps um, stabilize. And this is for each fixed star and n uh, as k goes to infinity. So for each star and n, I can choose a k such that the image, um, the image of pi star xn plus k to pi star xn uh, is constant from that, from that point onwards. Um, so for example, uh, if the maps are all surjective, then the limb one vanishes. Can you explain how this is the same as the one that I know for a cohomology theory, the 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 Milner exact sequence? Um, what's the one that you know for a cohomology theory? Uh, um, it is basically that, but I think the shift might be a minus, and it is like x can be a space or whatever, and it's just um, e star of no, what what is it? No, it's a filtered space. I think well, you just apply cohomology to the diagram defining the the limit. Yeah. Well, yeah. So yeah. I mean, I know how it's derived. I just don't. Oh, I don't. Okay. I know that one's derived. I don't know how that's the one's the same as this one, or if it's the same as this one. I think it is the same as this one. Yeah. Um, what do we mean by the same? I, I don't. I don't know. There is some value of the variables um, that makes it <laughs> from under which. Uh, under some operation, formal operations, the two become identical. Yeah, so, so the point should be that if you map X into your cohomology, like let's say we're, we're computing the ordinary cohomology of X, then, um, then this, yeah. this spectrum of, I'm sorry, X is a space, I guess, so I need to suspend it. Uh, so this spectrum of maps should be the homotopy limit of, um, of the maps from the filtered pieces into, into H. Um, and so if you take the homotopy groups of one of these, then those, that's the cohomology of, of the nth filtered piece of X. Um, uh -huh. and so, and so you end up getting a, getting a, an exact sequence that is telling you about the cohomology of X. Um, sure. But maybe this is like a difference between whether or not you want to be talking about the cohomology of the co-limit or the limit in terms of what the cohomology of an infinite product is um, and whether or not there's torsion or what, what if you're taking coefficients in a field or something. I mean, I, I think what I'm writing down should be fine. I think that what, the, you're, what you're writing down is fine for a cohomology theory, and I don't know about the other one. It's exciting. Yeah. yeah. So, but but so you see my point, right? I'm 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 taking, I'm I'm applying this exact this this exact sequence 
to the homotopy groups of this homotopy limit. Uh, of of f, uh, yeah. okay, f of thing, okay. Yeah. And then this is gonna be a minus one because um, because uh, cohomology degrees work opposite to, to yeah. homotopy and homology degrees. Um, yeah, so there's, there's a, uh, there's a, I found a math overflow question. I think, I think a Leonard Myers math overflow question, giving an example of a, a, an example of a space X, which is a CW complex where this is the CW filtration and you have a non-zero limb one term here, which is kind of interesting. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, that can happen. yeah. Okay, so um, yeah, so what else is there to say about this? Um, right, so this is one condition that guarantees that the limb one vanishes. Another one that's worth keeping in mind is that um, if for all uh, homotopy degrees and n, there exists k such that uh, this map from pi star xn plus k to pi star xn is zero, then both the the limb and the limb one will vanish. Um, and if you want an example where the limb one doesn't vanish, um, as I said, you can try to find that math overflow question. Um, but another one that's, that's kind of inter interesting is, um, is if you take HZ and you, uh, and you take the limit of multiplying by P. So um, let's see. So the, the, the limit of what this map does to homotopy groups is zero. Um, but it turns out that the limb one is not equal to zero. And so the homotopy limit of this diagram is uh, suspension minus one of this. So that, that's an exercise for you all. All right, what else? Um, right, so. Uh, hey, Paul, when you write CP, you mean like p -addicts? I mean the p -addicts, yeah. Okay. Yeah, so this, this the, the limit of this has a single non-zero homotopy group. It's in degree minus one, and it's, it's ZP mod Z. Um, and as a further exercise, that is a rational vector space. Um, okay, so let me take one minute to say something about Posnikov towers. Um, so this is a this is a, a useful example of a, a of a homotopy limit um, in spaces. You've probably seen that you can construct these towers. Um, Uh, where the point is that your space X is, is a homotopy limit of some spaces whose homotopy groups are concentrated below some degree. So X less than or equal to N will have non-zero homotopy groups only up to degree N. And then this, um, this map is supposed to attach the N plus one homotopy group. So it fits into a fiber sequence that looks like this. Um, and you can you can deloop this fiber sequence so that x less than or equal to n plus one is the fiber of a map from x less than or equal to n to uh, to the delooping of this island bird McLean space. Um, and you need some conditions on your space, but for example, if if your space is simply connected, you can always construct this. Okay, so this is also true in spectra. Um, uh, the only thing that's maybe more interesting is that spectra can have arbitrarily uh, low, uh, sorry, it can, they can have non-zero homotopy groups and arbitrarily uh, negative degrees. Um, but nevertheless, we can think about, uh, given a spectrum X, we can truncate it. So we can form a spectrum whose, whose homotopy groups only live up to degrees less than or equal to N. Um, and then we can fit them together into these fiber sequences, which, uh, um, which are fibers of some map to, uh, to an Eilerberg-McLean spectrum. Um, 
So if you know how about, about how to use these to do things like obstruction theory in spaces, you can do the exact same things in spectra. Um, and I think that's all there is to say about Posnikov towers. Uh, so I'm gonna- I'm Can gonna you say how you start yeah. if there's no bottom homotopy group? Oh, there's, there's no start, that's the trick. Uh, that's why I wrote dot, dot, dot. Um, so, so- Okay, how do I do this? Yeah, yeah, so, um, given so given I X, start in the middle. If I, wanna, if I wanna construct X less than or equal to N, um, what I can do is I can attach cells uh, to, to kill off um, the homotopy group starting in degrees uh, N plus one. So, um, so another way of saying that is if you believe in the existence of a connective cover, so a spectrum X greater than or equal to N plus one, which has the same homotopy groups of X in degrees greater than or equal to N plus one, then X less than or equal to N will be the cofiber of this map. So uh, is, it, is that okay? Uh, yeah. Cool. Okay, so I've been talking for an hour, so I wanna give people a chance to leave, but um, if you wanna stick around and you know, figure out how to, how to prove this, this statement about KO and KU, we can, we can totally do that. I wanted to understand what was said about the previous proof if it is